Maloney. Blood in the water, my guy. What is going on? <laughs> Listen, there's some great whites that circle that bay of yours, eh? <laughs> but uh, none, none, none quite as big as the great white I've just been given. And great white news, breaking news, of course, is yep. the demise and the unfortunate withdrawal of the six-time King of the Hill and yep. record holder, current yep. run record holder, on a side note. Uh, testing today with GT Club Sport at Kilani. Everything going yeah. according to plan. You know, your standard option. Let's give it one more run. Everything is perfect. Last run. Cam Sharp blows out the side of the motor. Game over. Where are you going to find a Gould F1 McLaren engine in South Africa? So, so this is for this is heartbreaking, first of all. It's heartbreaking mm. for people like you and me that know the history, that knows what goes on behind the scenes and what was at stake for that team. No, for sure. what this is what people don't understand about the race cars sometimes. That particular car, that gold, it's not like you can run down to the auto zone and go pick up a part. That mm -mm. can't just get fixed. You know, those those parts are machined, imported, and you uh, it's done. There's no way they can repair that car in time. Well, remember, we've chatted about it before and we've chatted in the past about how guys have have hustled to get whatever they needed to get to. Uh, JP from a vault, get my steering wheel because I left it behind. That kind of stuff <laughs> happens. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But but the bottom line is is this would in, this would entail having to import an F1 McLaren from Gould overnight. Yes. This is not fast yeah. and furious. We can't bring in parts for overnight from Japan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Although that's be been awesome, done in the be past. Awesome, be good. Yeah. So but unfortunately, so what this so does now is um, if I can just I just want to bring this into the screen quickly. Yeah. Give me a second. Uh, pa, 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 pa. Here we go. So this is the car that we're talking about. That's the one. It's yeah? the Team That's Perfect the Circle Bertha Wines uh, F1 Gould Hill Climb car. Now, um, a bit of history behind the car. Gould yeah. used to be the sort of engine preppers and, and sort of uh, engineering geniuses around McLaren and the F1 team and a whole bunch of stuff that they used to get up to. And um, okay. Gould and his son decided, you know what, we're done with F1. There's too much politics. Um, we're going to build our own car, and we're going to go and have a look at uh, the sport of hill climb as a as a as a playground. And yeah. since I think there's 17 or 18 of them that were built in total, so there's really, only one in the country. Really, yeah, of course. So, yeah, and and it's a purpose-built Formula One hill climb car. Yeah, to the point that. It doesn't even need tire warmers. They come with a specific <laughs> soft compound tire that yeah. when the run is finished, they roll it back down the hill. They take all the stones off. They clean it with yeah. sunlight, soap, and water and leave yes. the tires alone. They don't touch them. Yeah. They don't put tire warmers on. They don't, they don't even go near them. All they do is they play around with a little bit of tire pressure. That's it. Yes. And, and it's actually got a... It's got a, it's got an, a special engine that I think runs a, a diesel fuel to cool the fuel that comes in to to power the car up the hill. That's the technology yeah. that's involved in this car. It's it's mind blowing. And so to it's lose a car like car. this, first of all, is is huge. But of course, he's the, also the six time champion and the run yeah. record holder. You know, thirty four point yeah. three seconds is a that's a that's a fast run, dude. That, that's what I was going to touch on next. Now, is th this is why I'm so sad not to see that car there because I know what the car is about. You know, you giving me this kind of history makes me more sad that it's not going to be there. But mm. um, that being said, he's not completely out. He's still going to be there supporting for the weekend as you done, as you put through out in your press release. But he's still going to be there for, for Classic Car Friday. And yes, what yeah. I'm doing very quickly, I just want to show everybody this here. So... This car over here, there we go. That's the loader. That's the car that he's still going to be running on Classic yeah. Car Friday. So, so remember, he's, he's, still, he's still going to be there. And the yeah. one that was always very, very close to his time and always had, a, he's been sharing the, it's been a battle back and forth, is, is Franco Scrivanti in that Chevron, right? Now, the yeah. Chevron didn't compete last year. And if, I, if I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the results here. So, under the Z note, class H9 in the Lola, um, did a time of 41.7 last year in Classic Car Friday. Yes. So, that is still going to be a battle that Andre is going to have to deal with with, with Franco. 
And also with Ian Schofield. And yeah, absolutely, Ian Schofield's also yeah. been nipping at so, those so heels, those but... three. It's it's a sports car slash single seater battle for the classic yeah. conqueror top ten. But remember, yes. there are different classes. So Ian yes. and Andre kind of fought it out for that that H ten class. Um, yeah. But Franco's in the mix in the sports car. There's also yes. a change up in the ruling that's allowed a couple yeah. of modifications and bits and pieces to be played around with. So there could be a, a, a pretty epic battle, I think, between the three of them, considering the lap times that they dropped last time last year. Yes. That 41 being the fast, one of the fastest ever. It's not the fastest ever yet. He, uh, yes. I think that went actually to Schofield the year before when he won, when Andre's yes. car broke. Um, yes. But Schofield, Scribanti, and Besaidna are still going to battle hard on Friday for Classic Car Conqueror. Um, so Friday and I think is still going to be Friday is going to be a lot of motorsport action. But let's yep. talk about what this does, right? This turn of events. Let's talk about what that does for King of the Hill, right? So at the moment, sure. as we stand, if you're looking at if you're looking at 2023, right? Andre Besaid note in the gold did a 37.580 is what he yep. did last time around. Closest to him over there were Franco Scribanti in the R35 GTR doing a 39.8. And then Richard Roots, less than a second off that, doing a 40.5, also in the BB Motorsport GTR. Now, with Andre not being there, this is, this is blood in the water, but these guys are going to be for gunning sure. for that King of the Hill title. They're going to throw... Those teams are probably feverishly busy as we can be, knowing that this is what's up for stake. These guys are not going to sleep. For the next, for the next 100%, right? I have to agree. So you've got uh, the likes of Record and Franco that are going to be pushing hard to try and get maybe a modified to get a faster time than they've ever done before. You've got yeah. Robert Volk, who's coming out of yeah. a disappointment and a breakage right at the end of last year. So he's yeah. going to be looking to try and get that uh, infinity-powered machine of his up the hill. So that single-seater yeah. versus the two modifieds versus those other couple of little, uh, you know, Thorns amongst the roses, rose amongst the thorns, no matter how you want to put it. Yes. The as you said, <laughs> that blood in the water is now thick, brew. And and if they if they time it right and yep. they get that perfect weather conditions, which is what's been touted for this weekend, yeah, we are in like for amazing a, a whole new ball game. Whole weekend is gonna be crazy. Yeah. And if you and if you look at if you look at the fact that with Andre out now, there is yep. no King of the Hill champion in the single seater category. So True. it's wide open. The number one plate is gone. That number one plate is up for grabs. But the number but one plate you're talking about and you're concentrating on there is the overall. Who is going to be yep. what everybody looks at as the king of the hill? So as yeah, much as Rekha pushed still, last year. I'm still that. I was chatting, to, um, I was chatting to, to Ricky the other day and um, something unrelated. When, you, when, you, when you're in the stands, right, where we are a lot of the time, look, you're on track, lucky enough, I'm with a camera, I'm standing next to spectators, and I'm hearing what the guys are saying. People don't understand the motorsports or the rulings like we do. They don't understand these different classes. Yeah. So it's something like extreme supercars. They're like, hey, why is the BMW faster than a Lamborghini? That doesn't make sense. You know, they don't realize that different classes racing at the same time. So when King of the Hill comes, right, and they see prizes going out for a GTR. Say, hey, but the GTR won. But the 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 the, the Formula One car also. They, they don't understand that there yeah. are different classes. But the King of the Hill is the fastest overall. You know, yeah. which is something that's still going to be. I'm still going to love what you're looking for. For sure, and I think, I think that that's that's the that's the title that they're going to be looking to, to hunt down now. Is that if Andre is not there, who steps yeah. up to take that mantle? You know, they're going to win their classes. They're going to fight for their classes. They're going to take top three honors in their classes. There's no doubt about it. But yeah. it's that all important who was fastest on the hill yes. on Sunday. And that one is one that I think everybody wants. I want to bad. go back to something we said a, a few seconds ago. Your phrasing, you said, if Andre is not there, do you think in your heart of hearts that there's the smallest possibility? that a miracle could rain down and that car could make it? I would love to say yes, but I had a chat to the advocate. He was on, yeah. he was literally, he, he phoned me straight after a phone call with Gould himself. And there's okay. just no way they can get that engine here in time for Devon from GT Club Sport, who does miracles with cars, as you know, yeah. to put that engine in, to get it back up and running, to get it onto the same level as what they had their current engine running at. Yeah. It's not going to happen. 
So there's, you know, there, there the, isn't a possibility. For the, sake of, for the sake of cinema and for the sake of a story, I'd love for this to be a publicity stunt. I'd love for them to come the morning <laughs> off and say, guys, it's working. We, 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 we're back. And we've got a, all imagine? this build up. It, it would be an amazing story. But look, it's, um, yeah, it's up in the clouds. It's not going to happen. So this is, this is where we're at. And this is what's going to happen yeah. um, come Sunday. It's going to be amazing. It just blows it wide open. And uh, may the best man win, pal. That's all I'm going to say. Good luck to everybody. Mr. Maloney, thank you so much. But I'm going to chat to you soon. I want to get this out now. Um, and then you've got something with Gary. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you on the weekend. Take care then. Bye-bye now. Cheers, bud. Thank you.